All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom app ID to help the firewall identify traffic uh, very appropriately for what the, the type of traffic it is. In this scenario, I've got some webcams here from the Anchorage, Alaska airport. Uh, these webcams are hosted using some software called Blue Iris, and the firewall identifies this traffic as web browsing and HTTP video, which those are just base protocols. Instead of identifying it by those two, I'm going to create a custom app ID so that this traffic looks like Blue Iris, so I can monitor it and I can allow it, deny it, etc. Now to do this, I'm going to need a packet capture. So over on my monitor tab, I've already identified my IP and the Blue Iris server IP, so I'm just going to copy that server IP, come down to Packet Capture, and we're going to define a capture filter. Now this is important that you do these capture filters so that you're not grabbing more traffic than is necessary, um, and you want to make sure you've got two, at least two filters defined uh, so you get bi-directional traffic. And as you, if you paste in addresses, make sure you don't have any extra spaces like that. We'll put in the port there, and then let's do one more capture filter. We'll flip the address around so that, again, we get bi-directional communication, like so. We'll turn the filtering on. All right, now that filtering is on, uh, this session won't be matched until I reestablish the session. Uh, a few different ways I could do that. I could just close the tab altogether and relaunch, which I will do. But in my capture, I also want to have all of the different um, handshakes uh, and setup information in the PCAP. So let's turn on capturing now. So we're only grabbing. Oh, sorry. One thing I forgot to do. We do need to define our stage files. So uh, you got four stages. And what we're going to do is a trick to combine the receive and transmit stages. So I just do um, rx-tx PCAP. So I get both directions, and let's do the transmit, we'll do rx-tx.pcap, just like that. And I don't need this old capture. Perfect, now I will turn capturing on. So now the traffic has a place to go, and let's generate our traffic. So we get the three-way handshake, web page loads, we're viewing the motion JPEG. And that's really all we need. We can turn off the capture. Let's refresh the page over here. And then we see we have our RxTx PCAP, which we'll go ahead and open up. And here we've got Wireshark, where we're looking at that packet capture. Um, so I'm going to just start at this top one here. Everything looks right. That's our correct host. And I'm going to go ahead and follow this TCP stream here. And the one main goal, or the main goal, of creating custom app IDs is to look through the traffic for repeating patterns, or at least patterns that would be indicative of this server and its traffic. And as I look through this, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm not really going to claim expert status on. However, I am seeing these header strings go back and forth a few times, and you can see Here's my client uh, request header, right? And that's kind of what I'm looking for, blah, blah, blah. And then this is the server response. And so I really just want to grab something simple and I'm going to keep it at just this header string. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is this will accommodate multiple versions of the Blue Iris server. However, it does not prevent someone from standing up a fake website using a header string of Blue Server and spoofing this, this app ID. So uh, I think it goes without saying, the more bits you can provide and the more uh, accurate data patterns you can provide, like I could use this referrer plus this server and get much more accurate of an app ID match. But just to keep things simple, I'm gonna go off just the server header string. This is in the response, that's why it's blue. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna do this in the real world, grab some more data like this refer or the origin or th something like that, plus the blue server, just to make sure that it is what you expect it to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this for now. I'm going to close out, close Wireshark, and let's jump over to our Objects tab. And I'm going to hit Add to create a new app ID. I'm going to call this Blue Iris, just like that. We're going to refer to some criteria here. It's media, 
it's photo video and I use a browser to get to it. It does use a lot of bandwidth. Under advanced, I'm going to define the port. This is so that when I refer to this app ID in my security policy, I can simply leave the service at application default and it's a pointer to whatever ports you define here. Also, we want to scan it for some threats like viruses or maybe some data patterns and file types. Now, Palo Alto Networks provided app IDs. You get the full scope of content inspection, but custom app IDs are limited to just these three types. Next, I'm going to do a signature here, and this is how the firewall is going to identify the traffic, and I'm just going to call this my blue iris-sig. Um, the scope is where should the pattern be found in each transaction, which is request and response. We saw a few of those, but chances are that pattern in a transaction is not going to be sufficient. So I'm going to just look for it anywhere within the session. And then you can add or and and criteria. And obviously, the more you add, the more accurate your match is going to be. Uh, your operator could be pattern match, right? This is for... Uh, this is the one I'm going to use today, or you can use greater than, less than, or equal to for more of your hex patterns that you would want to provide. Context then is where within the traffic or what type of traffic should uh, this be seen or this pattern be found. And the way I interpret this here, this first piece of information before the first dash, that's the underlying layer 7 protocol. And then within that protocol, some of the communication uh, messages back and forth and since this was HTTP we're gonna look here for the HTTP protocol and there was the request where I could do that referrer but I'm really after the response right so this is the response header and I'm just gonna drop my pattern in there which was blue server just like that um, you need a minimum of seven bytes of, of information that you supply here. And blue server is just barely sufficient. Obviously a longer pattern, more patterns, more accurate. And then if you have some false uh, negatives or false positives, you can add on different qualifiers and values. But for this simplistic example, this should be sufficient. So I'll go ahead and click OK, OK, OK. Um, and then I will go ahead and commit. And by the magic of television, that commit has finished. Now let's go see what happens when we reload the page and see what we see in our traffic log. All right, we don't see it yet because traffic log entries only get created as sessions end, but I wonder if we see it inside of our session browser. Let's just put in blue iris. There it is. Awesome. So now we got this traffic matching blue iris. And I bet if I close the page and we go back and look at my traffic log, we should see some entries now matching blue iris. Let me just give it a second for that log entry to get generated. And then we'll refresh. All right. After another refresh, now we can see our traffic just looks like blue iris as we were hoping for. So that's how you create a custom app ID and what it looks like in your logs after it's committed.